Hey, I'm Eric Kennedy, and I'm a freelance UX and UI designer, and I also teach online courses on design at learnui.design. Today, we're going to redesign a submission from one of my students, from Rebecca Wise. Bex has been working on a redesign of the Wattify iPhone app, which allows you to track your CrossFit workouts. So we're going to look at the ad workout results flow, and I'll redesign it in Sketch, and then while I do, I'm just going to narrate the sorts of things that I think about when working on a design like this. It's just tips and tricks and tactics that you can bring to your own design work as well. Now, Bex's goal with this design is to make it really quick to enter a new workout, and then also to refresh the visuals to be really clean and modern. So let's get started. Using Sketch Preview, we can see the initial flow. So we start here on the add results screen, and the first thing you do is select where you did the workout, home or at the gym. Then you select what type of workout you did, CrossFit being the default selection. And then finally, there's a few other options for workouts of the day from CrossFit that you can pick from. But actually, we want to add a free weight exercise, so we go to open gym as the type, we choose lifting as the category, and in our case we'll do the exercise, the push press. Now we can enter the sets, the reps, that's just how many times we did the exercise, the amount of weight we did, any notes, and press save. That's the end of our flow. So let's start with the first screen here, which I'm going to duplicate, remove the prototype, and zoom in on. I'm currently asking the user to do three things, choose a location, a type of exercise, and then some format to the exercise. But in mobile design, a really good rule of thumb is to only allow one task per screen. If there's subtasks, show them on subscreens. Now there's exceptions to this, of course, but it's a good place to start, at least for mobile apps. Let's actually just have the user choose what type of exercise it was. The way the app is laid out, choosing home for where is the same thing as choosing gym for where and then open gym for the type. So unless I'm missing some reason why it has to be this way, we can actually take out the where step. The default side margins for iPhone are 16 pixels on either side, so I'll put in rulers in the appropriate places. And my buttons will be full width, 44 pixels tall, which is the default smallest tap target size on iOS. And I'll use a theme color purple for their background, actually maybe something a little bit brighter. The total line height plus paragraph height is 48 pixels, which means that there should be 4 pixels of space between each button here. And I'll just remove the bottom nav and the alerts icon, which might distract the user while they're in the process of adding results. This is another common iOS paradigm. Now I need to choose a good font here. The app is sort of sleek and dark so far, so I'm thinking something with that sort of feel, maybe something kind of squared off would work. This is my good fonts table, which is a resource in Learn UI Design, and it's a list of super high quality free or cheap fonts. Now, one I like right here is Abolition, the first on the list, but if I search Square, I'm coming up with some other fonts that might work well for a gym app. In particular, I like DIN 2014. So let's go ahead and use those. Abolition is kind of small for its size, so I'll pump up the numerical font size, but I'll also keep it within the top 64 pixels, and that's the default iPhone header height. DIN I want to be at a more medium weight, which helps these feel more like buttons. Perfect. Now we're starting with this flow, but if the user wants to navigate out of it, they're going to need a back button. So let's go ahead and add one. Whenever I'm creating an icon from scratch, I try to make it the same style as the text. The same thickness, the same amount of curviness, whatever. I call this drawing with the same pen. Since abolition is really geometric and squared off, that's what this arrow is going to look like too. Okay, now we've kind of combined these two screens into one. But the user's next task is to pick a category here. Now, two things are coming to mind. One is, this dropdown is really not necessary. If 100% of users who land on this screen need to then click the dropdown to see the options, let's just show them the options immediately and save them a click. I have an article linked below called ABD, Anything But Dropdowns, and it lists like a dozen different controls that are more usable than dropdowns in various scenarios. And we're going to use one of them. For consistency's sake, we're going to use the same controls we did before, a kind of a vertical segmented button choice. The other thing is on the visual side of things, this dropdown is not full width, and this is one of the weirdest but most common beginning designer mistakes I see. On mobile, almost all form controls should be consistently full width except for a little side margin, like 16 pixels on each side. That makes for big, easy click targets. Next, they're going to choose what lift they're working on. And again, 100% of users who come to this screen are then going to click into this search bar and start typing. So let's save them a click and just display the search bar immediately with focus. For my search bar, I'm just going to left align the text, 
unbold it, and add a magnifying glass. And this makes it really consistent with the buttons and styling, but just different enough to be identifiable as a text box. Since one of the goals of the flow is to make it really quick, let's suggest recently added lifts to the user. Selection from a short list is like always quicker than typing. I like white at 20% opacity for the divider rules. That's a nice way to get a lighter variation on the purple background. The list title, I'm actually going to have it be a little bit bolder than the list, but I'm going to bump that visibility of the list title down by making it smaller and less opaque. This technique is called up pop down pop. I link to it below and once you know about it, you're going to see great designers using it everywhere. Okay, and by the way, we could also suggest recently added lifts at the beginning screen too. I'd want to do more research to make sure this presents the options as helpfully as possible, but like even this could save users a lot of time. Finally, we have to enter the exercise details. Now one option would be to duplicate our search bar and then make a text entry for sets, reps, weight, and notes, but I kind of want to mix it up a little bit here. Whenever I create a new textile, I always start with an existing one and then modify it. And if they can remain consistent, that's all the better. Now where you enter the weight is big and bold and awesome. And if you just set up personal record lifting, you're really going to feel like a beast just typing in this big chunky number here. Looks really cool. Now that I'm looking at these labels, I realize I actually want to use a different style. So let's take the list title style and apply it there. That looks cool. And then our final field is notes. And then we just need a save button. I'm actually going to use this red color for our save button. I'll make it a little bit taller since it's kind of the main button at the end of the whole flow. And since there's so many pixels of that red, I can just make it a little bit less saturated, which will make it less harsh on the eyes. If we're entering sets, we need a numeric keyboard. And looking good. Now let's just hook up the sketch prototype. And let's compare the before with the after. Awesome. So we took a flow which was seven screens and reduced it down to just four. And it might be even less if you're just picking an exercise that you frequently do. So we also reduced the amount of typing, which is pretty critical because it's a huge pain on mobile. And we met our other goal, which was improving the UI to look much more sleek and modern. Now, if you like this, you can sign up to get updates whenever I release new content at learnui.design slash newsletter.html. And if you're serious about learning design, make sure to check out my online video courses, Learn UI Design and Learn UX Design. Learn UI Design covers all the visual design things we talked about, color, typography, styling components, and more. Learn UX Design, on the other hand, is about creating usable apps, best practices around forms, navigation, flows, mobile design, other strategies to keep your apps intuitive and simple to use. Both courses have tons of sample projects that illustrate all the lessons, and so it's like kind of sitting behind my shoulder as I show you how a professional designer approaches every aspect of modern digital design. Check them out, learnui.design. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, leave a comment below. Cheers.